I'm excited to introduce our speaker for today's session, Ms. Zereline D. Meneses Adorador. Ma'am Z is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Forestry, major in Forest Biological Sciences at the College of Forestry and Natural Resources at University of the Philippines, Los Banos. And she earned her Master of Science in Forestry also from the same university in 2016. Currently, she is a faculty member of the Institute of Biological Sciences at UPLB and uh, is involved in research projects in collaboration with the National Institute of Bi Biological Resources, Ministry of Edu Environment, Korea, DOST Conserve Kaigangan Program, and the Ruford uh, Foundation's Orchids of Summer Island Research, among others. So she is also a practicing and licensed forester, and uh, she serves as a terrestrial flora consultant in some renewable energy projects. Friends, let us all welcome Assistant Professor Zerilyn D. Meneses Adorador. Ma'am Z. Hello po. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, po. Thank you very much po, sir, for that introduction. So uh, please me, uh, let me allow to share my screen for the presentation today. All right. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar. I will talk about um, the Orchids of Summer Island, Philippines. So actually, this presentation is a portion of my master's thesis uh, way back 20-something, which I do not want to disclose. And uh, we have the recent additions on continuous field works in Summer Island. Okay. So this is quite a short presentation consisting of three major divisions. One, we will have an introduction, a general intro on the orchid family. Next, we will go over the orchids of Summer Island and then some highlights or important stories on recent discoveries and records on Summer Island orchids. So as you know, general knowledge, orchidaceae is um, among the largest families in flowering plants, which is uh, consisted of about 25,000 to 30,000 species worldwide. So that range actually or fluctuates and, and depends on uh, the on recent advances, research, and publications on the number of orchid species. Um, kasi, um, as the years goes by, may mga orchids na nasisinonymize and may mga orchids din naman na nanineme as new species. So the type genus for orchidaceae is orchis, which is derived from the shape of the um, tuber of the type specimen. So the distribution of orchidaceae is nearly cosmopolitan, uh, meaning it can be found nearly throughout the world. And they produce dust-like non-endospermous seeds, and they are mycoheterotropic during germination. And in fact, um, most are fungi-reliant fungi for their growth, development, and reproduction. So this is the photo of an orchid fruit with the mini orchid seeds inside, and this is a germinating orchid seed. Oh, sorry. Okay, now let us look at the uh, basic anatomy or features of the orchid flower. So basically, uh, the flower is composed of an outer whorl of three sepals. Uh, we have two lateral sepals and a dorsal sepal as shown in the figure here, and then an inner whorl of petal, which is composed of two lateral petals and one which is highly modified into um, something that is called a leaf or a labellum, wherein in some orchid species, um, this may serve as a landing platform for some pollinators. So among also the distinct um, characteristic is the fused male and female reproductive organ or reproductive part of the orchid flower which can be found in the column. Okay, so the orchid family uh, due to its um, a very uh, broad or very numerous representative species and very varied um, types, appearance, um, it is subdivided into five subfamilies, which is Apostasioidae, Vanilloidae, Cypripidioidae, Orchidioidae, and Epidendroidae. 
So for my talk, actually in Summer Island, all of these five subfamilies of Orchidaceae are, are well represented in Summer Island and can be found in the area. Uh, with one outstanding find, the sa subfamily Apostasioidae, wherein both species of Newija and Apostasia are found uh, just in one site in the forest over limestone in Paranas. Okay. So let us look at the orchids in the Philippines. So to date, there are more or less 1,300 Philippine orchid species distributed in 150 genera. And according to Sala and Pelser et al., about 80% of these orchid species are endemic in the country. So these three orchids shown in the slide, Vanda Luzonica, Gramatophilum Gravaniae, and Vanda Sendariana, are among the notable species um, since uh, they are endemic and at the same time, they're also endangered. So Vanda Luzonica is endangered, Gramatophilum Gravaniae is a critically endangered species, and Vanda Sendariana, which can be found in Bindanao, is another critically endangered species of orchid. So what is what makes orchid very famous? So actually, it is because of several uh, importance or uses of orchids. So among the um, top uses is its horticultural and economic importance. So due to their showy flowers and some rare orchids, which are finally finding their way towards the market, and actually in some species and hybrids, they are very famous in the international market. Um, they are a source of income for uh, landscapers, horticulturists, traders, and so on. So another importance is that um, there are orchid species which are used in perfumery. So one outstanding orchid is the Rincostylis regentea, uh, which produces a uh, sweet, strong scent, which is being tap harvested for perfumery. We also have um, Catleia, Vanilla, um, Cassisetum, and so on. Another is for cultural symbolism. In some countries, such as in Colombia, Singapore, Venezuela, and Costa Rica, there are orchid species and hybrids which are used as cultural symbolism for this country. So we have we have here Vanda Miss Joaquim, Patleya Traine, Guariante, and Patleya uh, Mossier. Um, going back here, actually in the Philippines, there was one move before. Um, to make Vanda Sanderiana as a national flower. Um, however, um, actually, I, I was not able to follow or I was not updated if the bill or the move for Vanda Sanderiana to become a national flower was already approved or is, is still in progress. But um, I think that it is also just rightful since Vanda Sanderiana is endemic in our country. Okay. Now, another importance of some orchids is it is used in traditional medicine. In traditional Chinese medicine, they are actually using gastroja elata as cure for some common illnesses such as diarrhea, bumps, fever, and so on. Um, however, in the Philippines, we are not using this and we do not have that. So next one is orchids as food flavoring. So among the uh, famous food flavoring that you use in ice cream, um, baked goods, and so on is vanilla. And vanilla is actually, uh, the vanillin from vanilla is actually derived from about um, three commercially grown species of orchids. So actually, um, they, they refer to this orchid fruit as the orchid bean, although in fact it is a capsule. And then this is being dried and processed so that the vanillin can be harvested. And this is the one that is being um, used as flavoring for ice cream or in baking goods. Another is Orchis mascula, which is used as a uh, cook in cooking or in salep. So para siyang cereal drink. Uh, but this orchid is not found in the Philippines. Okay. 
Another uh, gastrogel, which is uh, also known as the potato orchid, which serves as staple food for native Australian. And on top of those, there are also ecological significance of orchids. So sometimes orchids are used for conservation measures. Um, they can be an indicator of forest disturbance, um, such as, for example, in areas wherein the forest is relatively conserved, um, there are more or higher species, like higher diversity of orchids in the area as compared to logged over or converted area. And in some areas, it can be used as flagship species for conservation, such as in Mount Apo, uh, wherein we have Vanda Sanderiana. And so it is important for plant conservation and protection of orchid-rich habitats. And thus, when we are trying to protect this um, orchids, this endangered, critical endangered or vulnerable orchids, we are not only protect, protecting the species per se, but rather we are also trying to incorporate the protection of the range of ecosystems or habitats where this species can be found. So now let us zoom in to Summer Island Natural Park. So this photo was actually taken in uh, 2000. 15, I think, 2015 at the top of Mount Hurao. So during that time, uh, pwede pang ma-access yung tuktok ng Hurao when we still have um, military forces in the base. Okay, so as I've said earlier, um, data from here are lifted from my study. So actually, my first exposure in Summer Island was during a work in NGO in Manglares, a Los Baños based NGO. And our first site was somewhere here in Lavazares, Catarman area uh, in northern Samar, when initially we are looking for mangroves. And then we had the chance to visit Victoria in northern Samar still. And I, wa I was astonished to find out that uh, this is small patch of forested area holds a lot of orchids in it. And so that drives the study to focus on orchids of Summer Island. So in this map, uh, the ones with the yellow, yellow and black dot are the sites visited for reconnaissance and recording of orchids in Summer Island. And the ones in stars are actually where the sampling plots during my study for the ecological um, portion was conducted. So it was limited to those um, due to security reasons and accessibility. Okay. So here are some of the areas visited. This is in Marabut, um, West, Western Samar, near kilometer 16. This one, where you can see the timber, uh, the the border or the edge between the agroecosystem and the forest is in the foothills of Mount Hurao. So this photo at the center was taken along Pulot River in Paranas. So this one on the left side is in Balangiga, Eastern Samar. This is actually a diversion, ito, diversion stream or river para doon sa kanilang uh, gold mining. Ayan. So medyo destructive na yung gubat dyan. And then this one is in Taft, Eastern Samar, where the Forest Philippine Eagle Sanctuary is located. So those are just some of the areas visited, um, pero marami pang iba as shown in the map. So I will not go by it one by one. So let me present to you the highlights of the orchids of Samar Island. So to date, there are about 109 species of orchids that can be found in Summer Island, distributed in 50 genera. And 51 of these are endemic species or can be found only in the Philippines. Of these, 14 are listed in the IUCN and the Philippines Dow 2017-11 National Threatened Plant List. So the orchids that were studied or documented can be found between 105 to 750 meters above sea level and in at least three notable forest types which is yung forest over limestone in Paranas, forest over ultramafic formations in Balangiga and the uh, lowland 
evergreen in Mount Coral, which is transitioning actually to somewhat mountain near the top. So this is the list of the threatened orchids of Summer Island. So we have Eridus liana, Arachnis, Bopilum tumingiae, Loherianum, Restrepia, Symbicium alisei, Epigenium, and so on. So actually I would like to show you this one. So this represents uh, the different um, threatened orchids in Summer Island. So actually they are endangered, critically endangered and vulnerable for some reason. And that is because um, even though some of these species are endemic and endangered, in, are endangered, um, they are highly prized and is collected due to their appearance. Okay. okay, so I would like to focus now on some highlights and stories of the notable um, species found in Summer Island. So this one is a Pendicula ondulata variety Longical Karata. So this is recorded in Taft Eastern Summer, which is actually um, nung nakita namin tong halaman na to nung team and the guide, hindi kami, uh, we are not up for collection and document documentation because purposely ang punta namin noon ay para marigo sa falls and then it just so happens that this species is hanging in a in a slanting tree on the way near the falls and so we took a photo but we never got the specimen and then while studying this species undulata variety longical karata it turns out to be a new island record in Samar Island. And that the nearest record for this species is actually in Leyte. Okay, so, and during that time, in 2015, uh, during the time of, photo of photographing this species, Appendicola ondulata variety longical karata is only known by in 2015 by the uh, type description and the type specimen. So during that time, ito yung unang documentation in situ of Undulata Longical Karata. Um, however, with the advent of citizen science, and I know many of you here are also uh, following Cost Digital Flora of the Philippines. So marami na ngayon, paunti-unti, yung nakakakuha ng photo ng species na to and turns out na uh, meron, nag occur din siya outside Samar. So, Ayon. So next, okay, so during our five, six years of field work in Summer Island, so local people have been telling us that there are various types of walling wallings that can be found in Summer Island. So being an orchid love lover and an orchid researcher, so I would like, uh, we would like, the team would like to see these different types of walling walling. So they are telling us there is this walling walling whose inflorescence is about half a meter, a walling walling whose inflorescence is about one meter long, and so on and so forth. And then they're telling us of white walling walling and the pinkish walling walling in the area. And we know that there is, uh, there are um, certain variations in the color of walling walling in Mindanao. And so, in that five, six year study in Samar, we're trying hard to look for these various types of walling walling in Samar Island. And actually, one time we purposely climbed a limestone formation, a karst in Eastern Samar, um, because the, the guide way back then told us that there, uh, there is only one left at the top of the cars where this walling walling can be found. And then finally, when we were able to get to the site and take a photo, it turns out uh, the one that they're referring to as walling walling or Vanda Sendariana is actually a phalaenopsis. So another, a different genus of orchid. And then some other people, identified Gramatophilum to be the pinkish walling walling variety and Samar. At yung isa, yung pinaka pinaghirapan naming ma mapuntahan at makuha uh, with the hopes that it is actually 
a walling walling turns out to be another different genus, which is Pumatokalpa. So in the end, we were not able to find any Wanda Sanderiana or Waling Waling in situ in Summer Island, um, but rather uh, we found these three genera of species, uh, three genera of orchids, which um, some locals referred to as Waling Waling due to their beautiful and showy flowers. So I would like to instill in this part that this is where uh, taxonomy and the use of scientific names plays a very vital role. So you see, the use of common names um, can somewhat drive confusion because different species can be called the same common name. However, um, at least in the scientific community, if we try to stick and use with a scientific name, uh, we will know that um, these actually are not the Vanda or Vanda Sanderiana that we are looking for, um, but rather different genera of orchids. Um, pero napakaganda pa rin at not less than Vanda Sanderiana naman sila. Okay, now I would like to focus uh, your attention on certain uh, distribution records in summer that are also a highlight of the study. So first, sorry, mention and jump on slide. So this is Dendrophilum filiforme, a relatively widely distributed um, or sorry, widely distributed orchid and uh, sorry, convaliriforme. And this can be found also in Summer Island. So another is Teroceras filipinense, another widely distributed um, orchid species, and this actually connects the populations or the uh, distribution of Teroceras filipinense in the Luzon Island and the Unsa Mindanao area. Okay. We also have Grammatophilum wallisii, same case, and then uh, this is Rubicacea minimiflora, so she is widely distributed then. And this is Dendrochilum filiforme, which reached its easternmost distribution in Summer Island. And this is Symbidium alishiae, again, the easternmost distribution in Summer Island at the time of recording during the study. So this is Rubicacea minimiflora. So this is the northernmost recorded distribution of the species. So as you can see in the map, um, Mindanao and then Leyte, so that is one of the fire orchids, Renantera matutina. Okay, another is, uh, this is before uh, known or called as the Kadesha microphyton, but now it is called Dendrobium microphyton, which also reached its easternmost and northernmost distribution in Summer Island. So, as the conclusion of the study or the thesis way back then, another, uh, another curious genus is Shuderia. So actually at the time of collection and discovery of this Shuderia, it is the first genus record for the Philippines with the extent of distribution uh, or recorded distribution in New Guinea, Fiji, Samoa, uh, Mike. Uh, Micronesia uh, and Molucas Island only. And during the description of this new genus record and new species in Summer Island, it now reaches Philippines and specifically Summer Island upon publication. The genus Shuderia has its center of diversity in New Guinea. And curious as it may, um, napakalayo nung, nung record since Dito, yung pinakamalapit na record niya ay somewhere here in New Guinea. And Shuderia samarana, which is an endemic species for the Philippines, can be found in Samar Island only at the moment. So that is during publication. So, however, um, recently, um, there are proofs that the genus Shuderia does not only occur in Samar, 
but rather the, there are certain people who were able to capture the Gino Shuderia in Mindanao, specifically in Mount Hilong Hilong. However, the specific epithet or identity of the Shuderia in Mindanao um, is not yet confirmed and appears or seems to be different from the one that can be found in Summer Island. And as we continuously study this new Philippine uh, genus record, um, there are also certain proofs that the distribution may actually not be restricted in the Greater Mindanao, Paik, and Samar, but it could actually be extending up to some areas in Luzon. So uh, soon enough, these distributions and individuals will be disclosed. Um, this only means one thing. Now, minsan, what we might thought as an endemic species or island endemic or island endemic restricted species may not necessarily be true. And it can be, uh, it can be supported by continuous studies, continuous research on this area. At, pwede siya actually na remnant ng collection or pwedeng traces ng dating population na hindi pa natatagpuan or na study enough. So, research must go on. Okay, so this is another highlight. So, this is Sulitz rubicesha. So, this genus and species was first described in 2008. The original collector of the specimen is Sulit. That's why it's named Sulit. And actually, at first, Ormerod named this as a new genus of orchid that can only be found in Samar Island. So that's why, that's why it is called Samar Orchid Soditiana in 2008. Um, however, in a more recent study, actually in 2014, it turns out that Samar Orchid Soditiana is actually, or Samar Orchis, the genus Samar Orchis is actually lumped with the existing genus Robicesha. And so Samarorki Solitiana became the bashanim for this new species. And the accepted correct scientific name as of now is actually Robicesha Solitiana and not Samarorki Solitiana anymore. Okay, so we are now looking at some new records of orchids for Summer Island. During the publication um, years back, these orchids were not yet included because these are recent additions uh, doon sa field work. So, Fepidium ramosii, Peristylum, uh, Peristylus grandis, and Calanti pulcra are actually new locality or new island records for Summer Island. Okay. And the highlights that I've shown to you are not the, are not the only orchids that can be found in Summer Island. So napakarami pang iba't ibang orchids sa Summer Island and there seems to be um, many or a number of novel new species of orchids in the Summer that needs close examination and documentation. Um, however, I would like to show you some of these orchids which are also documented there. Uh, we have Hilofia pulcra, Dipodium, um, Tricoglutis, Peroceras, Tricoglutis loheriana, a promising Clocoglutis species, Bulb bophilum, okay. a yellow Bulb bophilum, okay. Appendicula, okay. a slipper orchid or Paphiopedilum, which we are waiting hopefully for next documentation para sa kanyang inflorescence to confirm the identity. Okay. And so on. So this wide variety of orchids in Samar are affected by the uh, recent changes in the landscape of the island. So there are certain observed um, disturbances in the areas of studies, such as, for example, is in the Cebu one. Kita yung agroecosystem, yung pag-spread niya, the existence of farmlands and kaingin systems which creates forest edges. So in Paranas, um, prominent din yung coconut farming. Tapos sa Balangiga, there are certain documented parabaw logging and small-scale mining. 
Okay. Let us now look at the ecological value or importance of the orchids. So these are actually derived uh, from the data produced in my master's thesis. So in general, so this is an overview. There is an observed higher epiphytic orchid diversity when light is abundant in the area. And also, their composition based on the abundance of the epiphytic orchids is negatively influenced by slope. So what does this mean? If we behind the steeper the slope, there seems to be um, lower abundance of epiphytic orchids. So one explanation could be, we know that being epiphytes, these orchids are, are highly dependent on the porophyte or the plant where the epiphytic orchid are attaching to. And so the steeper the slope, in some cases, the tendency is we have lower number of porophytes. And thus, this could have contributed in the lower abundance in steeper slopes. And for the terrestrial orchids diversity, so the uh, positive significant correlation is detected for um, the diversity and higher elevation. So based on the study, uh, there seems to be a more diverse terrestrial orchid in higher elevations. Actually, not included in this slide, but was observed in the field is that when we are trying to correlate the existence of artificial forest edges or the man-made anthropogenically induced forest edges, we found a, a trend wherein, in general, both epiphytic and terrestrial orchid seem to be, uh, seem to have higher abundance towards the forest interior. So, mas kaunti siya towards the edge, tapos pagpapailalim or papaloob sa forest interior, mas dumarami yung abundance ng orchids, both epiphytic and terrestrial. Okay, now I would like to discuss some of the threats to orchid diversity. Uh, most of this is not new to you. So among these are um, poaching, the conversion of the habitat of the orchids, and harvesting or timber is extraction. So these photos are actually taken in summer, the one dito sa taas, saka sa right side. So this photo on the upper portion is... Uh, a remnant of a mined oversight in Samar. And here we also found um, counting individuals ng Yulofia. Okay. Uh, before, sabi ng mga locals doon, medyo mapuno daw, tas marami daw orchids na, na nakukuha at nakikita. Um, pero not for sale, but rather for their own household only. Um, however, after the mining and after the area was left out, so ganito yung itsura niya ngayon. And one of the tragic stories here is actually nagkaroon daw ng, uh, I think that was after Yolanda, noong na-wash out yung area, tapos maraming puno yung naputol. And then after that, na-consume ng fire. So mas lalong naging dagdag na threat doon sa remaining orchids in the area. So this one is in Tansulaba, Western Samar. So remnants ng kaingin. And with the with the advent of yung la, uh, lockdowns, so lalong nauso yung illegal plant trade. So dahil nasa, nasa bahay ang mga tao at karamihan ay naging plantito at plantita, uh, over the past uh, one year ng lockdown, so actually the DNR, DNR uh, now warns on the illegal plant trade at kasama doon sa top 10 na commonly poached threatened plants in the Philippines is actually your orchids. So il kasama na dyan yung waling-waling, which is a critically endangered orchid, uh, the Paphiopedilum kasama sa mga lady sleeper, Phalaenopsis, we have certain species like Afro Phalaenopsis aphrodite, Chileriana, Stowarsiana, and Amabilis which are being illegally collected, and also different um, species of Dendrobium. So these are just some of the threats to orchid diversity. So, um, However, gusto kong i-flex sa inyo itong isang... Uh, organization, a local organization in Summer Island. So I hope uh, the PO and their president is watching right now. So this is BOSI. So actually, they're among the organizations in Summer which are uh, who 
who is interested in the conservation and protection of orchids in the area. So when when the project in Reforge started, so isa sila sa mga unang natap na organization who will work hand in hand in rescuing uh, the orchids mula doon sa mga naputol na puno, mga nalaglag na orchid, mga pinag na, naiwan after ng certain harvesting. So isa sila doon sa mga kasama sa initiative in conserving the orchids of Summer Island, which hopefully um, will push through and will continue in the next years. Okay. So, sabi nga natin, um, I would like to close the presentation with uh, this quotation by Baba Doyum, where in the end, we will only conserve what we love, we will love only what we understand, and we will understand only what we are taught. And in the case of the report project, actually the bosses as an organization are among the first local people in Samar, um, wherein more or less extensively na introduce yung orchids and its conservation in the area. So maraming salamat for listening for this webinar. And I would like to thank um, all of these fieldwork bodies who were with me, with us, with the team during the studies and collections in Samar. And of course, um, to Prof. Adorador, um, who was also there during the collections at Tagaakyat at Tagabitbit ng samples. So maraming salamat po. That's the end of my presentation. Ayan. Thank you very much, Ma'am Z. Daming mga bulaklak po. Tama-tama, it's Flores de Mayo. Alam niyo naman po, ang May traditionally ay... Uh, that's when we hold our... Uh, Flores de Mayo, yung mga Santa Cruzan, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, dahil yan yung time na maraming namumulaklak na mga uh, halaman, ay yun na ating mga ginagamit. So, uh, before we proceed, uh, I know you have lots of questions para kay Ma'am Z. Uh, baka, and while you're formulating your questions, uh, we will proceed. Of course, we promised earlier na may quiz tayo, so pop quiz. And uh, thank you, Ma'am Z, for providing our questions. Uh, the Bashunim of Rubiketa Sulitiana is one of these. A, B, C, D. And the answer is... Wait. 67% of you answered Samarorkis Sulitiana and the others mostly answered Phalaenopsis Sulitiana. So the answer is... It's letter B. Mam, Mam Z, bakit? The answer is Samar Orkis Solitiana. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, because uh, the Baddis was described as Samar Orkis Solitiana in 2008. Mm -hmm. And then after merging the genus Samar Orkis to Rubikesha, mm -hmm. so naging Rubikesha Solitiana siya, con conserved yung specific epithet, but the new rec the correct recognized genus is Rubikesha. So mm -hmm. Samar Orkis Solitiana became the Bashonim or the oh. species. Okay. So that's new information for us. Next, so how many subfamilies of orchids can be found in Summer Island? Is it four, three, six, or five? And the 10 seconds are up and are meron tayong assortment of answers. Merong nagsagot ng five. So may six, may 17, uh, four, and let's see the answer. The answer should be letter D, uh, five. And ma'am, ano po yung mga subfamilies na yun? Actually, all the five subfamilies can be found in Samar, di ba? Ah, we I have see. the Vanidioidae, Cipipidioidae, Orchidioidae, um, Epidendroidae, and then the Orchidioidae. Apostasioidae. Ah, okay, so kumpleto pala sila sa Summer Island. Uh, next question, a third, the following, the following genera of uh, orchids in summer islands are confused to be walling-walling except Phalaenopsis, Gramatophyllum, Eulophia, and Pomatocalpa. Ten seconds are up. And 61% of you answered Eulophia. Let's see the correct answer. And it's correct. So, tandaan nyo, Phalaenopsis, Gramatophyllum, and Pomatocalpa are the ones being, oh wait, 
or are are the ones being confused as uh, waling-waling in Samar Island. Tama ba, ma'am? Baka nagkamali ako? Yes, tama po. All right, thank you. And the fourth one, what is the type genus of Orchidaceae? Peristylus, Orchis, Malaxis, or Vanda? Uh, I think sa tingin ko maraming makakasagot sa inyo na ito. Although, meron pa rin nagkamali. And the correct answer is Orchis. So the type genus of Orchidaceae is Orchis. And the last question is a, a widely available and, and economically important food flour, uh, flavoring are derived from an orchid is from the genus Gastrodia, Orchis, Vanilla, or none of the above. I think uh, lahat ay makakasagot ng tama rito. Uh, I, and the answer is vanilla. <laughs> so yung, uh, yung nasa ice cream natin, yung mga flavorings na ginagamit natin comes from uh, uh, vanilla. And okay, so ang, ang live quiz natin ay tapos na. Let us see the leaderboard. And we have RC getting five out of five correct answers in just uh, 36 seconds. Siya ang nanalo kasi si CE ay uh, 38 seconds. So congratulations, RC. And uh, thank you for uh, everyone. Thank you for, uh, thank you for uh, uh, participating in our quiz. So let me just uh, stop my sharing. Let's proceed to the open forum. So uh, reminder lang po, you can go to the chat box, put in your uh, questions there for Ma'am Z from John Calvin Clarete. No? De, private in a sense na ang tanong niya is, ano pong favorite orchid nyo? <laughs> ah, okay. Um, <laughs> ano may favorite actually, piece pala? <laughs> um, actually, um, yung iba kapag medyo personal pala, no? kapag <laughs> tinanong sa favorite orchid, kadalasan sinasabi or hula baka waling-waling or banda sanderiana no mm -hmm. um um however um yung favorite orchid ko is actually paano ba uh, isa siyang hybrid um, ah okay commercial tapos oh, wag, wag niyo naman wag niyo uh, don't take it against me so my love for orchids actually started from my mother kasi tapos yun yung yun yung orchid na napakarami na green grow niya sa bahay namin before so actually it's uh, yung Vanda Miss Joaquin yung national flower ng Singapore yun yung favorite ko kasi growing up yun yung like like itang nagpa-flower sa bahay namin ayun okay Ah, may comment lang si Luigi Tabanda. Ma'am Z, hindi makasend or late makasend ng answers yung phone ko. So, so uh, sana maparating mo na lang kay Ma'am Z yung iyong questions, Luigi. Okay. Sir Louie from CAR, nasa ah, Latin okay. Midad yan ngayon. I-text nyo na lang kay Ma'am Z. No? <laughs> okay, more questions pa po from our audience. Ako, ang question ko ay, Ma'am, um, have you gone to other provinces but to look for other orchids and uh, would you able to would you be able to compare yung diversity ng ating mga wild uh, orchids sa let's say adjacent province na lang ng Samar mm -hmm. um actually um ilan dun sa mga uh, study bukod sa Samar ay field works in Sibuyan mm -hmm. in Palawan um in areas in northern Luzon, dito sa Cordillera, tapos sa Neva Vizcaya, well, syempre Mount Makiling, which mm -hmm. is napakalapit sa atin, and Banahaw. And then, uh, so far, um, based, sa, based sa sampling namin, kasi usually we use the standard na yung 20 by 20 meters, so nagkakaiba na lang doon sa technique. So either we use you know, alternate 20 by 20, or a, a more random 20 by 20. Um, pero so far, Sibuyan saka Summer Island, yung um, among the area sample, da, Sibuyan and Summer Island are those which has the highest diversity dun sa mga nasample namin. Ayun, with, um, personally, I think Summer Island, dun sa parts ng forest over limestone, yung may napaka, at least napakaraming na-document 
in a 20 by 20 plot. Ayun po. Yan, okay. So, ma'am ako, kasi personally, um, the, the first time na nakakita ako ng vanilla, yung mm. bulan, no, was in Mount, I think it was in Mount Kamhantik in, in mm. Bulan, I guess. So, no? mm. um, it was in a fieldwork kung saan din namin na-discover or uh, yung aming mga botanist from the Museum of Natural History eventually uh, discovered yung uh, holotype ng uh, Strong Gilidon Juan Gonzalez. I, but uh, noong time yun, noong nasa Mount Kamhanti kami, doon ako nakakita ng first time ng, ng wild na vanilla. And para pala siyang, you know, it's like, uh, pum, para siya pumubut, pumuputok pala. And then, uh, uh, may lumalabas na siya na parang white uh, white seeds po ba yun? And it's, uh, nadadala siya ng hangin. So, ang tanong ko po, kasi narinig ko po sa inyo kanina na uh, the, the steeper the slope becomes ay mas parang mas mababa yung diversity mm-hmm. or yung occurrences ng mga ng mga orchids. Uh, uh, gusto ko lang makuha yung opinion nyo kasi uh, given that, for example, itong vanilla, mm-hmm. pag ulaklak siya and then uh, nadala ng hangin, would you say na uh, malaki din ang possibility na ma- madala yung kanyang or mag-reproduce siya in other parts of the of for example of the area sa mountain at at lower elevation mm, okay um uy sa lahat yes tama uh, naputok yung fruits niya kasi uh, ang um, fruit ng orchid eye capsule mm. tapos yung lumalabas doon na parang very fine na dust like particles are actually the orchid seeds mm, and okay. um um, thousands, hundred thousands, if not millions, yung laman na seed sa isang fruit ng orchid. Um, and wind can be a great disperser for orchid seeds. However, we must take into account, uh, remember that orchid seeds are mycoheterotropic in nature. So, reliant sila sa kunjay upon, uh, upon germination. And so on, when they are wind dispersed, tapos pag nagland sila, um, sa isang lugar, um, it's na, uh, it does not necessarily imply na lahat yung si orchid seeds na yon na nadala ng hangin or napadpad mm. somewhere ay mag-germinate. So, depende pa kapag magkakaroon ng successful na uh, interaction with the existing mycoheterotropic fungi. So, ganun po siya. So, hindi necessarily kahit maraming marami sila at uh, ay, yung pro- success rate right for reproduction or proliferation ay dependent. Yes. Okay. So okay. And actually, uh, yes. I'm sorry. I would like Sige. to add. Um, that is actually um one of the success stories sa Thailand, saka sa Singapore. Uh, ah. We have a lot of endemic and beautiful orchids in the Philippines. However, until now, di ba karamihan ng nakita ninyo sa Damwa sa Divisoria, yung mga binibenta mm. ng hot flowers ng orchids are not from here but rather exported from Thailand sa neighboring countries natin. Kahit sa kanila, they're doing a septic culture of the orchid seeds. So kung kung tayo, kar- na- nandun pa tayo minsan sa ano eh, sa kokolek ng mother plant, papara minsan nursery, yung hmm. uh, hinihiwalay, yung yes, mga tikis uh, or hinihiwalay doon sa bulbs, tapos yun yung pinaparami. Sa ibang bansa, nagpo-propagate na sila or nag a culture na sila ng orchids. Kasi we, doon tayo medyo na, na uhuli. Ayon. So, kaya hindi pa ganon masyadong ka-strong as compared to neighboring countries yung ating orchid industry. So, siguro may, may, may tanong ako dyan but um, probably mm-hmm. later na lang siya. So, okay. we could accommodate the others. So, from Queenie Pai uh, Abaya, Ma'am, can we identify orchid species without flowers? Ah, um, actually, um, you can identify siguro hanggang... Uh, yung surely identify up to the genus level. Kasi um, yung mga genera naman ng orchid, medyo may mga form sila na malalaman mo or mag, um, ma- makiki out mo based on the appearance of the leaves or the pseudobulb and so on. You can identify up to the uh, genus level. Um, pero up to the specific epithet or the species level, um, kakailanganin natin yung yung flower, flower. itself. Kasi um, there are uh, 
orchid complexes also that can only be delineated or identified based on the on the appearance of the for example the labilum or the callus or the foot and so on which is all of this can be found in the orchid flower so to know for sure um kailangan no orchid flower for the specific epithet Ayan. I'm just wondering, ma'am, uh, meron na ba bang orchid na very, very similar talaga and then but um, it can only be distinguished by a, a very small characteristic? Uh, may mm -hmm. ganun na po ba? Or yung, 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 yung morphological diversity niya ay mal mm -hmm. malawak pa ba in the sense that uh, all you need is to see the flower itself? Mm -hmm. Paano ba? Um, actually... Maraming maraming mga orchids na kapag titignan mo at a glance, parang parehas. Mm -hmm. oh. Pero when you look at it closely, saka mo makikita yung differences. So one one very good publication and study is the Phalaenopsis amabilis complex. So for the, di ba we have Phalaenopsis amabilis, Phalaenopsis aphrodite subspecies aphrodite, we have Phalaenopsis sanderiana, mm -hmm. and um, isight ko na lang yung difference nung Amabilis sa kanong Phalaenopsis Aphrodite. So, um, doon for example, yung Phalaenopsis Amabilis, dinis, uh, dinistinguish siya mula sa Phalaenopsis Aphrodite by the presence of yung two-tooth, dalawa, two-tooth callus ng Amabilis, tapos four-tooth callus naman sa Aphrodite. And then, between Phalaenopsis Aphrodite and Phalaenopsis Sanderiana na magka parehas din ng appearance and Sanderiana ang distribution niya ay nirecognize na restricted within dito sa Mindanao area. Yung Phalaenopsis Sanderiana, yung kanyang kalus ay four tooth tapos yung Aphrodite four tooth din. So paano sila pinaghiwalay? Doon sa recent study, yung Phalaenopsis Sanderiana yung dalawang inner tooth sa kanyang kalus ay mas mataas. And then for Phalaenopsis Aphrodite, subspecies Aphrodite, yung dalawa naman na outer tooth sa kalus ay slightly longer. Mm -hmm. So, ganun ka-detailed yung separation ng complex nila. Marami pang ibang orchid stories na ganun. Yeah. Um, that's why um, sometimes describing a new species of orchids um, is not paano ba, a snap of a finger or hindi siya instant. Kasi kailangan mong uh, kailangan mong i-examine microscope, uh, cross-examine siya. You have to collect more specimen. You have to account the flowering, mm -hmm. yung fruits, and so on. Para makita mo yung um, range and combination of differences. So that you can say na uh, this could be a really distinct and new species of orchids. Um, sometimes, yun din yung nagiging reason actually kung bakit may mga, uh, not just for orchids, but also for other plants, kung bakit may mga nasisinonymize, di ba? Mm -hmm. So we are Tama. familiar with that kasi na, nakakombine siya kasi pwedeng um, sa una, um, you, you recognize this as a new species, but then with more recent studies, tapos mas malawak na collection at mas maraming samples na nakukolekta, nalalaman natin na some are actually um, phenotypic variations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So eventually, when you have a broader species concept, you come to recognize na same species pala yung dating akala natin na magkaiba. So, okay, thank you, ma'am. So, uh, question from R.C. Naive. Um, given the diversity po of the orchids in Samar, uh, should we expect po a new species in the future uh, to be described by your team? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Actually, there are several, four, mm -hmm. five orchid species pa na, na awaiting description. And we are hoping that these are actually new species of orchids for Samar Island. Um, however, I don't want to rush into describing this species, or rather, I want to collect more evidences, more samples, more herbarium specimen, so that I can cross-examine and check. Because um, as much as possible, I want prevent or I want to prevent that in the long run, I 
same lang pala yung mm. described. So I don't want to rush into that. Uh, but there are at least four to five awaiting nice. formal description pa. That's good. And, um, sa lahat ng researchers, um, actually for the orchids, um, sabi nga nila, parang maraming, maraming nag-aaral ng orchids. And sometimes, um, para sa mga batang researcher, bata, katulad namin. <laughs> kasama um, ka. Oo, <laughs> kasama kami. Uh, minsan parang mapapaisip ka na, ala, wag ko na kayang gawin dahil marami na. Uh, but no, you should continue to work on it kasi napakarami ng orchid sa buong mundo sa Pilipinas. And that's why um, researchers are needed to study on this. We, whether on the description of new orchids, on its ecology, evolution, biogeography, mm-hmm. we need researchers for this. Okay, so RC, uh, expect around four to five new uh, uh, orchids na may dadagdag sa ating uh, Philippine orchids. I know, si RC uh, nag-actively uh, working yeah, din siya and collecting ah, see, orchids. Ganun ba? So, um, baka mag ano, baka pwede kang sumampo sa summer, you might include it in your MS or PhD dissertation, di ba? Mm-hmm. Para ano, mapabilis natin ang, ang advancement ng recognition ng orchids of the Philippines. Okay. Thank you. From Ma Eleanor uh, Salvador, uh, she's from PUP Manila. Ma'am Z, may nakikita din po ba kayong epiphytic orchids which are attached on native gymnosperms sa study sites nyo sa Summer Island? Doon din po kasi ang study site ko pero wala po ako nakitang attached sa ilang na sampling areas niya. Uh, nag-sample daw siya ng mga podocarps. So karamihan mga terrestrial orchids po ang nasa Borongan. Okay. Ah, buronga ng site ni ma'am. Oo. Um, actually, makinis kasi yung ano, medyo relatively smooth yung, yung trunk nung, mm-hmm. nung mga genosperm. Um, tapos, uh, for the orchid seeds, since napakalit nila, um, relatively more chances of landing sa surface area na medyo rough tapos maraming uka-uka or fish mm-hmm. work. So, maybe... Uh, that th- that could be one of the explanations why. Although, doon sa mga sampled sites, ang karamihan nga na attachment niya, ano eh, uh, diptero, which is mara- marami kasing diptero part doon, tapos mga fissured part. Um, rather markera, there are also some, and in some cases, even sa mga branchlets ng malalaking pandans, nag attach siya. So, for the porophyte specificity kasi, um, there are certain studies which says na um, it is a possibility that the pH level in the bark might affect yung success of germination ng ah. orchid seeds doon sa porophyte. Mm-hmm. So um, that could be one uh, explanation. However, in our study, we were not able to look into the specificity of epiphytic orchids. Po kasi. But that is a good venue of study in the future. Oh, Ano pala yun, no? Um, may possible factor din pala yun, no? pH mismo ng ng bark. Mm-hmm. Okay, hindi ko... Well, sa iba, ano po eh? Sa iba, new information. Uh, sa iba naman, yung depende sa fissures niya. Kapag mm-hmm. mas smooth, pas, mag, mas fissured ba yung bark, and so on. I see, okay. So, uh, Gloria Nelvis, I think she's from Singapore. Uh, yung mga ground orchids po, saan po ba siya nabibilang? Terrestrial. Terrestrial, Terrestrial siya. Terrestrial orchids or ground orchids. Although may mga uh, may mga lithophytic din kasi. Ganun. So medyo terrestrial din yung dating niya. Um, especially in summer, we observe itong silogaine. Tapos uh, nandun siya sa mga rock sa mga pero medyo tawa ko baka nagland lang siya doon or dahil uh-huh. merong may mga cockpit areas kasi so ayan any chance po ba na ang isang aerial orchid later on would you know thrive in terrestrial environment i don't know mm. may, may possibility oh. yun? That, like mm-hmm. ano, out of the blue lang na question okay actually sir maganda yung tanong mo the new orchid from summer so there is mm-hmm. samarana um, based on observation, is actually a hemi-epiphytic orchid. Ah. So, kasi, yung observation doon sa site, it starts as a terrestrial orchid. So, mula sa ground siya, pag nag-germinate, mula sa ground yung mm-hmm. tinutubuan niya. Tapos, um, eventually, naga, ano siya eh, gumagapang siya eventually, tapos parang nakakat off yung 
yung connection sa ground kasi yung mga very matured na nandun na lang sa taas tapos wala nang wala nang connection doon sa lupa okay. pero nagta-tribe pa rin siya um, kasi may presence ng aerial roots so hemi-epiphytic siya so nag-start siya as a somewhat terrestrial in nature and then later on pag na-establish na yung sarili niya nakakuling na siya doon sa porophyte niya nag-survive siya as epiphytic orchid Ah, okay. So, uh, wala pa lang. Hindi pa lang. No? May, uh, may parang hybrid pa lang. No? Uh, pagdating oh, doon sa... <laughs> so, hindi lang terrestrial, hindi lang aerial. Meron pa lang nasa gitna. Okay. So, from Joshua Michael Jonas uh, from OVCAA, uh, what is your opinion po uh, with changing our national flower from Sampagita to Waling-Waling? How could we persuade or convince our policymakers to proceed with that uh, with that movement? And the uh, follow-up question niya as well is that what are the con- what is the conservation efforts uh, conservation efforts for the waling waling as of today? So, maraming salamat, Joshua. Right. Um, actually, um, personally, ang Vanda Sanderiana kasi is endemic in the country. So, di ba, when we talk about endemic species, these are species which can only be found in our country and nowhere else. Mm. So, as compared to uh, the Sampagita, which is actually a uh, an introduced species in the country. So, kung, kung yun pa lang yung titignan natin, um, choosing between an endemic species mm-hmm. and a non-native species, if I were to be asked, syempre, I would go for the endemic species. So, Um, pilit, kumbaga, kasama sa emblem niya yung Pilipinas, dito lang siya sa Pilipinas matatagpuan, nowhere else in the world. So I would go for that. That could be a uh, good uh, statement already. On top of that, um, endemic siya at the same time, critically endangered din siya. So um, as a move, a feeling ko, if this species will be moved as a national flower in the future, so it can somewhat Uh, be a flagship and also contribute to its conservation. So with regards naman sa conservation measures, I think there are already um, organizations, uh, different organizations, NGOs, who are dedicating on the aseptic culture of um, Vanda Sendariana, yung, yung seeds from the capsule, mm-hmm. and for reintroduction of Vanda Sanderiana in the wild. Also, may mga organizations na, uh, pero hindi na kang name drop, na ano, um, they're trying to to protect or conserve yung certain localities na nandoon yung Vanda Sanderiana. Saka parang locally speaking din, parang may ano eh, parang may unwritten rule na when you see this population in situ, parang you see it you keep it yourself, parang hindi mo dapat ipagsasabi. Kasi malaki yung price for, I don't know, for some reason, highly priced yung orchids na, na, na kinukuha from the wild. Mm. So, may mga ganon. So, there's, there are people na, na may mga nag aseptic culture ng Vanda Sendariana in the hopes that this aseptically cultured will someday be reintroduced to the site. Ngayon. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have a question from uh, Chanel Alisa Trinidad from uh, she's a biology student from Bulacan State University, and her question is: Yung form or structure po ba ng orchids? Is it related or natutulungan sila for their survival? I think uh, maybe let's let's uh, restructure yung question niya mismo. Siguro the uh, does the form or the or structure of the of the orchid uh would it ano ba siya? would would it be a factor to ensure their survival in the wild mm-hmm. um actually uh, magandang example dito yung mga ilang orchids that are um is very specific doon sa pollinator niya so if mm-hmm. ever you have heard of of reese i was not able to show it in the presentation. So yung offries, yung structure ng flower niya ay ini-imitate niya yung pollinator niya in such a way which is a wasp, in such a way that akalain ng pollinator na isa, yung bee, akalain niya na um, parang mate 
yung flower ng orchid. And so, maglaland doon siya sa orchid, parang nakikipag-mate siya doon sa orchid. So, at the same time, nakaka-aid yun sa pollination ng flower. So, para sa para sa continuous uh, reproduction. Another is, may mga very specific like yung uh, Darwin's orchid na parang after a hundred years pa na-discover yung specific na uh, scolidwast na pollinator niya. In mm-hmm. such a way na napakahaba nung, nung parang nectarine spray niya na designed lang yung moth na yon para siya yung makakakuha doon tapos habang kumukuha ng nectarine ay mapopollinate yung orchid. So, may mga ganong specificity na in such a way, nakakatulong siya for the continuous reproduction of the orchid. Okay. Oo, mayroon, mga, mayroon siya mga structures na, uh, what you call this, uh, yung kumbaga very distinguishing uh, characteristics and parang mayroon siya ka-partner usually, no? To, um, lalo na yung, I think na, na nabasa ko yun or na, narinig ko yun yung yun nga yung orchid na halos kamukha din niya yung wasp and then uh, parang o oh, namimimik nga niya and then uh, enticing the insects to uh, mate with them di ba mm-hmm. mate with them and then akala nung nung insect uh, nagre-reproduce siya pero habang lumilipad siya to the other orchids ay nakakapag uh, pollinate din siya mm-hmm. okay so uh, we have a uh, I think one more question from Marilyn Rose Sakdalan. Uh, she's just curious which live longer po, aerial or terrestrial orchids? Oh, um, actually at the moment, um, personally, uh, I have no idea mm-hmm. kung, kung alin. Um, siguro kasi um, we cannot that uh, generalize. Pwede kasi siyang case-to-case um, basis. Ayun po. So, kung kung alin ang mas matagal ang buhay generally kung between terrestrial and epiphytic orchids, um the answer is for me I do not know, mm-hmm. but what I'm sure is uh, there are a lot of factors that affects the uh, lifespan of the orchid. So, um such as yung maintenance of its habitat, tapos yung existing pressure in the area, and then um Sorry, yung pusa. Yung... <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then, um, yung presence ng uh, uh, fungal attacks, not the mycorrhiza, but yung fungal attacks kapag may, kapag may mga parts na exposed doon sa orchid. So, it's an interplay of factors yung pwedeng maka-affect sa lifespan ng orchid. But, yun. Okay. Thank you very much. And to all our audience na nag-participate sa Q&A, maraming salamat po. Thank you, Ma'am Z, for, uh, for, for this uh, presentation. And uh, with that, uh, we are happy to provide uh, Ma'am Z this uh, Certificate of Recognition. Um, it reads Museum of Natural History, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension, UPLB, awards this Certificate of Recognition to Professor Zerilyn Meneses Adorador for serving as our resource person uh, during today's uh, 2021 MNH Biodiversity Seminar entitled Flores de Mayo, the Orchids of Samar Island, Philippines, held 20th of May from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. PST via Zoom. And in witness whereof, the signature of our director is affixed. And um, of course, let us, uh, we are inviting everyone to visit our website. It's at mnh.uplb.edu.ph. You could write us at our email, mnh.uplb at up.edu.ph. Please like, follow, and subscribe our uh, social media accounts at Facebook, so, uh, Twitter, um, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look for the handle UPLB Museum. Um, reminder lang po, yung ating YouTube record, uh, the recording of our webinar will be posted in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash UPLB Museum, hopefully around uh, mamayang gabi. And uh, check out UPLB Museum of Natural History articles at the Wikipedia and Trip Advisor. So with that, maraming salamat po, Ma'am Z. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. And to all our uh, audiences as well, maraming salamat po. And uh, we hope to see you next week for another Museum of Natural History Biodiversity Seminar. Ingat po. Thank you, Ma'am. Thank you po. Salamat, Ma'am Z. Thank you po.